Hi everybody, welcome back. We have a short video about Aristotle's golden mean. So, remember that here we're talking about virtue ethics. And virtue ethics are different from the other types of normative ethical theories that we're going to be talking about because we have a different starting point. The starting point for most moral theories is what is the right thing to do? With virtue ethics, our starting point is what kind of person should I be? So virtue ethics is a family of theories that traces its roots, roots in the West, of course, we're talking Western tradition here, back to the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle. And when we talk about Aristotle's moral theory and we look at this idea of virtue, we see that for Aristotle, virtue is a mean or a midpoint between extremes of action or passion. Aristotle thought that there were specific virtues. And I'll post a table of Aristotle's virtues and vices on our class website so that y'all can take a look at that because it's important to see that. There were these specific virtues that Aristotle thought that people should, should possess and that we should continue to strive to enhance about ourselves. So one thing about Aristotle's version of virtue ethics is that this is a lifelong undertaking. We are continually engaging in this act of bettering ourselves and attempting to be virtuous people. It's something that we do for our entire lives. So for Aristotle and for these questions of ethics of character, we're asking this question of what sort of people should we be? And that is t what will tell us what sort of action that we should take. So Aristotle's moral theory relies on this idea, as you see on the board, of the golden mean, the middle ground between extremes. Now this, according to Aristotle, this middle path is the path towards practical goodness. And this is something that we see from Aristotle's perspective relies on this wisdom that we gain about virtues. So when you think about this idea of what it means to exist in the golden mean, and you think about the idea of generosity, like a truly generous person doesn't give too little, but According to Aristotle, in order for generosity to be a virtue, a person should not give too much. And one example of this is to imagine a parent who gives away so much that his or her children become deprived. In that case, we're not willing to say that the genuine generosity, which is a real virtue, exists. Instead, in that instance, that virtue of generosity becomes a vice. And for those of you who are Game of Thrones fans, I ask you this question. Is Ned Stark a virtuous character according to Aristotle? Ned Stark loved honor and the idea of being an honorable man. But is it possible that he took it too far? My argument is Aristotle would say yes. And this is not originally my argument. Y'all take a look at the pop culture and philosophy Game of Thrones Aristotle episode that I'll have coming out shortly. But just remember, when you think about any of these examples, we're looking at what it is that's a midpoint between extremes of action or passion. So on our example about generosity, true generosity occupies that middle point between extremes. So we have to be careful that we don't give away too much and also that we don't give away too little. And the idea of knowing how much is too much is not something we'll know until we're in that situation. Okay, so I have another example for y'all about the golden mean, and this is one from my own life. And here we're going to use the virtue of courage. So as y'all see on the board, in that middle column, courage is that midpoint or golden mean between these two vices. There's this deficient vice over here on the left side of cowardice. And it's deficient because you are deficient in courage whenever you are a coward or you act out of cowardice. Now, over on the far right side of the columns, we see rashness. Now, rashness is going to be 
of vice because it is an excess of courage. You have too much courage when you act in a rash manner. So here's my story for y'all. Right before I started teaching at Texas State, I had to run an errand and I had to stop to get gas in order to run this errand. While I was at the gas station, this German Shepherd came running across the street and she came up to me. She was obviously lost. She had her collar on but didn't have any tags. So I stopped what I was doing and I took her to my dog's vet's office so that we could see if she had a microchip because I wanted her to get back to her person. Now at the time, I had a huge German Shepherd named Goliath and he was my baby. Like, I loved this dog so much. Y'all know how much I love Lola. I loved Goliath just as much. Well, I thought about what would I want somebody to do if Goliath got out, which is why I went to the vet and I took the dog and we saw that there was a microchip, but it was not registered. Hey y'all, you gotta, you gotta register those for that to work, just FYI. So, the vet's office told me they didn't have any space to hold the dog while they tried to find the person to whom that microchip had been sold. Apparently there was a way for them to do that, but it would take some time. They said they didn't have any space, so I would have to either take the dog to the pound, or the animal shelter, or um, take her home with me and put her in my backyard. I didn't want her to go to the shelter, so I took her and I put her, I planned to put her in my backyard. Now, the place where I was living at the time, you couldn't get to my backyard without walking through the house. I know it sounds strange, but that's just the way that it was set up. So I had to take her through the house with Goliath, and we had another dog at the time named Sully, and he is also enormous. I got her out to the backyard and the other two dogs came with us and everybody seemed fine. They were all getting along, everything was good and Goliath wanted to play with this ball. He lived for going and fetching that ball. It was his favorite thing to do. So while the female German Shepherd hung out with Sully, I threw the ball for Goliath and the first four times that I threw it, everything was good. But the fifth time that I threw that ball, the female German Shepherd came running across the yard and attacked my baby, my big, gentle, giant baby. And y'all, when I say he's a big boy, he was a big boy. He was a German Shepherd Great Dane mix, so he was enormous. But he was also really, really sweet and gentle. And she and he got into a dog fight. I didn't know what to do. So I ran over and I put my hands in between their mouths and tried to physically put myself in the middle to break up the dog fight. After seeing this and hearing me screaming, my neighbor who happened to be out in his yard came running over and he made his way in and he helped me to break up the dogs. So. I ended up having to call my vet and tell them I was coming in to bring Goliath because he was injured. They would need to pick up this female German Shepherd to make sure she wasn't injured. And then I had to go to the hospital because I was injured. So all of us went to our various doctory vetty people and I ended up spending about $700 on myself and my dog. The vet's office told me that my boy was such a sweet boy, he could have definitely hurt the other dog, but he didn't. That it was obvious that he was not trying to hurt her, that he was very gentle with her. Because he and I took the brunt end of the fight, and he was definitely the bigger and more powerful of the dogs. So, at the time, I was still bartending, because this is right before I started working at Texas State. And so I had to go to my job bartending and for the next week with my bandaged hands, I got to hear from patrons at the bar how I should have reacted in this situation. They gave me a bunch of different ideas as to what I should have done. Now, before we get into their ridiculous ideas, let's take a look at our chart and think about the situation. Now, I think that in this situation, 
Aristotle would not say that I made the correct choice. I think that he would say that I was rash, that I showed excessive courage in the situation, and that I did not correctly assess what would be needed to safely disengage these two dogs. He would probably say that I should have looked to see Sean, my neighbor, in his backyard and asked him to come help. I didn't do that. Now, I think it can definitely be said that I was not a coward because I ran on in. But I still don't think that Aristotle would agree that this was the correct or virtuous action to take in the situation. I will point out that Goliath ended up being fine. I ended up being fine. I still have some scars from it. But the female German Shepherd was absolutely fine that day. And a couple hours later, they found her person. And her person did say that she has some territorial issues and doesn't particularly like male German Shepherds. So that's another thing is I went straight into the situation without knowing anything about this dog. So I put myself, my dog, my roommate's dog, and this other dog in a dangerous or potentially dangerous situation because I was rash in trying to do something about the dog. And in that instance, I can definitely say that my emotion overtook my reason. And that's not something that we should do, according to Aristotle. Again, we need to focus on that midpoint of that golden mean and not doing something that's excessively rash or excessively deficient and engaging in cowardice behavior. Oh, so what I'd like for y'all to do is tell me what do you think I should have done in this situation? Now keep in mind that my dog was my baby and he also had degenerative myelopathy which is a condition that eventually deteriorates the dog's ability to walk so he had trouble with his back legs, he was on pain medication um, and so some of my patrons at the bar said I should have gotten a big stick and beaten the dogs with it. Right, not going to do that that I should have gotten the hose and turned the water on. If we'd had a hose, that would have been a good idea. Um, so y'all see, there, there were all these ideas that were thrown out that were not possible or that I just wasn't going to do. Anyway, I am interested to know what, what you think about that situation. I'm glad to hear any criticism of it because it was obviously a dumb mistake on my part. Now, a consequentialist would probably say that it ended up fine because there were more overall positive than negative results. The dog didn't have to go to the shelter. They were able to find the person quickly, all that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, but I don't think that Aristotle would say that it was virtuous. All right, I'm interested to know what y'all think about that. And I hope that this introduction to Aristotle's golden mean was helpful to you. And I hope that me publicly embarrassing myself with my dumb decision is something from which you all can learn. All right. Thanks for your time. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.